Hello, I will show you how to do the sixth chapter of the correct C++ course. The sixth chapter of the C++ course is called Is Odd. And if I click on it, it takes me to that chapter. And um, the goal is to respond to exceptions. We have to understand how the course works. And we should have written a correct show CLI arguments program, which was the previous chapter. So just for the structure, I like to open up the tab. Uh, how this course works and follow those steps. So I'll do it fast because I've done this already multiple times and so did you. So step one for the chapter. Let's, do so. Let's go up. A bit smaller. A bit smaller. And fork it. Well, it's forking. We take a look at the next step. Clone your fork. Let's clone that fork. It's still busy. Clone that fork. Get clone that fork. Hold on. Next step. Activate Travis CI, go to Travis CI.org. We sign in with GitHub. It's free and it's easy. Uh, we go to our accounts and perhaps Travis did not pick it up yet. It did. So no need to pick to click sync accounts, otherwise um, then, then you would force it to check again. Just activate this is old repository and you're good to go. Next step, modify the readme. Do so CD correct CPP chapter name is is odd. Now it's bad to read me. I'm going to modify we should build a big slash correct underscore CPP underscore. And we're going to replace from that string the username, which is correct CPP in this case. Replace all down. Alright, so we've modified our beloved readme file, and the next step will be to do the exercise. Well, to do the exercise, um, we're going to read this first. I'm going to download the Qt Create project file because I like to use Qt Create to do my C++ exercises. So whatever it is, no need to read it. I just need to save it in my folder called Recipes Alt. I'm just going to call it the main. Uh, so we've done that, and now we can simply open it up. Correct CPP is odd. And we're going to open it with Qt Creator, configure the project, go to the main, and there it is. It's a bit empty still, so uh, let's just liven it up a bit already. Character pointer arc v. Uh, let's immediately already convert the argument just to you know, std vector of std string arcs. It's a constructor that starts with arc v and goes to arc v. Should already be, an, be a nice and useful conversion. String good fact, of course, I can just copy the code from the previous chapter. Uh, that's const because uh, we can only read it. Let's take a look at the exercise. The exercise by the commander in this program that determines if its argument is an old number. If there are more arguments supplied, ignore the ones beyond the first. Alright, so let's take a look. So the program in here is called is odd. If it has no arguments, output is, can be anything, but it should exit with a 1. If the argument is nonsense, it should exit with a 1. If it's a too big integer, exit with a 1. If there are more, then and, and the first argument makes sense, exit with 1. Makes sense if it's nonsense exit with a one my issue. Alright, so I'm, I'm going to do that first. I'm going to filter out the, the useless inputs. So if the argument size, let's just use count, if that's um, zero, if there are no arguments, return one. That you should supply your arguments. And well, that's done. So if there are multiple, we know that at least there is one argument. And we are, can actually already obtain it, because now we have to take a look at that argument. I like to convert it to a string. Ghost stood. That's actually unnecessary. We know that arc v, arcs, index 1, that that holds the argument of the user. And we can convert that to an integer with stoy. So of course you can click on that and then we can see what, uh, what's what we need to do. It's very helpful. So we need to 
do a stitch story on that, and then we have our integer. Const int i, let's call the number. I like curly braces. That's the C plus plus um, eleven notation. It's tr more strict. And then we have to determine if that number is odd. It should throw an exception. Let's do that later. Let's first do the, the happy road. If the thing is odd, shows true. If it's even, show false. We can do that. If number modulo 2, if that's non zero, if it's 1, it's odd. So that means it's, uh, it's odd. Let's wait. Probably um, not odd, so it will be um, even. And of course, it's like there are not many ways, and this is not the way I, uh, my favorite way, perhaps. But I, I like to build up the story a bit. All right, I don't know why the indentation is so stupid. So, so we do the happy road now. Um, there are some problems already because um, there will be exceptions here in this step. But um, just for um, let's just run it now. There are already some things. Uh, arc v. Oh, this should be arc c. I'm sorry. C out. It's not a member of std. Let's include i in string. Yes, I like to sort my headers. It expects a semicolon there. Probably also one there. Well, c compiler. And it um, does throw an exception already, which is. Uh, Because probably there are still some. Let's put in a one. Yeah, there's a bug. This should be one. If there are no arguments, then return one. So um, if I run my project, project root setting without arguments, it should return one, it should fail. So you can't read it, but it says exited with code one. So awesome. So this line works great. Arc C will never be zero, so that we can uh, guarantee that. Like if you really want to be sure, so Arc C is at least one. Assert uh, assert liberally. It's an internal form of documentation for yourself and your coworkers. So no problem. Will be re removed in uh, release mode anyway. All right. So if there are no arguments, it returns with exit code zero. That's great. That's at a uh, one, uh, let's say a one, one, we know that the value one is odd, so now it should show true if I run it. It does, it's too small to read, but it says true. And if I run with a two, or let's say something two, if I run it, it should say false, because that even number. Um, Modulo 2, that's false. And, oh, correct. Well, it's, it's false. Oh, great. Uh, now we are going to put in the exceptions. So the, this is the thing that may uh, may fail. I'm going to try to do that. I'm just going to put uh, the whole thing in a try statement. I'm going to catch my exceptions. So try to do that. This is the happy road. We already did it, uh, but we may catch an exception. So we could use um, well the exception to you. The remote we can use just std exception. It's the base class. It's const when we catch it. No need to give it a name because we won't show it anyways. We do know if uh, the conversion by stoy fails, it should return one. But that's all it needs to do. Return one. Uh, we could also catch um, there are two types of exceptions that can be thrown by Stoy, which is an um, invalid argument in the case that the argument is uh, a word or uh, whatever, or that the integer is too big. Get, let's say um, a billion, billion, billion big, and then you cannot convert it to an integer. 
it is 4 billion max on 32 bit so um, if it's too big it can't uh, do its magic and then throws an exception which is the way it should be if it can do it work it's work then the try statement will just go to this and go beyond the catch and here return zero uh, you don't need to write it because it's in the standard that it's added if it's absent so no need to write it so i think i've nailed the exercise here all right so uh, next step i did the exercise i'm going to push my code let's do so Get now starts its work but I do see already if you take a look at the code that we did forget something important which is the documentation so Travis will fail which is neat because we should be write correct C++ code so I'm going to describe I'm going to document what this program does um, determines program program to determine if a number Odd. program to determine if a number is odd if there are zero if there are no arguments supplied by the user exit code will be one if there are two or more arguments I think I documented this well. I think it's a complete documentation. So um, let's add the code again. Git add git commit add the documentation. Stupid of me not to do it. To push it. And now we can take a look at Travis. So um, let's refresh the page. I assume these are grey because Travis is still working. Let's take a look at what Travis is doing. So if you take a look at the build history, we now see that there are two builds. So here we did our exercise, but we did not document it yet. So I, ex I predict this will turn red because we didn't do it correctly. Um, this is our newer one where we added the documentation and it hasn't started yet. Uh, oh, there it sounds starting, but it will take two more minutes. So instead of the two minutes, I'm going to um, show you how Travis um, indicates if you've done it incorrectly. So we're going to click on this thing because I expect it to finish any second. It takes a couple of minutes for Travis to do its work. But we're going to take a, a bit of a look through, um, so through what it's doing. So most of this thing, so the upper part, so it is useful. Uh, it's, it's yellow, it's, it's busy. Dr. Cat, go back to the GitHub. Time, useful. Uh, these are uh, things if you your Git commits. But uh, most of the part you don't need to read all this, it's, it's useless for you as a student. And actually in the end most things fold, ah, this is great. So the, it starts getting useful after dot slash test, then it starts running the test. And indeed it says incorrect, incomplete documentation, so the tools detected that you did not document it, which is great. Um, CPP check, they could not find any problems. 
So that's great. OC Lint didn't see any problems. Check doc finds problems. Code coverage is measured anyways, but your build exited with one. You didn't do the exercise correctly. So let's go back to the build history. Uh, let's see. So it's now at 1 minute 30. I'm trying to do again to uh, do its work. So um, that takes uh, one more minute. So I'll just, uh, I'll just, uh, yeah. Well, instead of waiting, I'll just be uh, right back. See you soon. Hello. We see that Travis has finished and that we did our exercise correctly according to Travis. So um, this is our GitHub. Let's take a look. It should be green now. It is not green yet because it's grey. But if we refresh again, sometimes it can take a couple of minutes. It's green. So also this exercise now, we've done it correctly.